Good morning. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday morning, May 6, 2025. 10.55 a.m. local time, California time, that is. 5.6 earthquake, the latest on the earthquake 3D globe. Uh, right around the Vanuatu region, starting to fill in in that little gap zone that's been somewhat quiet here over the last couple days. Uh, USGS not picking up on that earthquake yet, but it's right in the middle of this uh, seismic absent of earthquake activity called the gap zone, seismic gap zone. So watch this area for the... Uh, foreseeable future at least here near term could see some larger activity within this zone it's one of those hot spots that really don't go it really isn't quiet for all that long of a time frame so things starting to fill in there with the 5.6 the latest quake not a big one but it could get uh, upgraded downgraded we'll have to see what the usgs reports on this uh, for the california area let's go ahead and start up start down here in southern california see if there's anything major uh, a look at the 2.5 map and above well, that uh, pretty much removes all the earthquakes, aside from one three-pointer well south of the border into the Baja California region. Aside from that, generally small microquake activity out here today. Really nothing uh, of any abnormal movement. It's been, you know, what, some of those, some of these times here where it's quiet, it can last for a couple weeks, a few weeks or so, and then things start to pick back up. We're just in that stage of uh, somewhat quietness out here across Southern California. But it's not going to stay that way for long. Uh, one earthquake finally up here in San Francisco, but <laughs> expecting a little bit more than a little 1.4. This has been a, a seismically dead zone uh, for the last week or so with very minimal earthquake activity. Most of the time, we at least have a handful of earthquakes up here on any given day. Uh, but this little 1.4 from late last night is about the only one here on the map. I do expect this to fill in, though, uh, in a bigger fashion. I don't know exactly how big, but uh, we could see some movement uh, up here across the San Francisco Bay region soon, uh, just because of all the quietness here and activity, lack of activity. Uh, up here north of Santa Rosa, that's the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. That's not a volcano going to blow. It's a heated area, obviously, below where geothermal plants are uh, utilizing that heated area to produce uh, some type of steam. And that powers uh, some homes out there around the North Bay. Uh, a little bit of spotty activity in Nevada. Here's that earthquake from yesterday well off the coast of Oregon. Nothing new to report there uh, for now. Washington region, a couple twos and some ones out there. Nothing major. Seems like the West Coast out here just for now is... Uh, uh, just a little quiet through Utah, a handful of earthquakes, uh, but overall those are probably small microquakes as well. Look at that, not a whole lot above the 2.5 level. Yellowstone National Park, uh, let's just double check that, see what we got here for May 6th. That's today's date. Not a whole lot of anything here. Looks like some wind events stirring up in the last couple hours, but far as any uh, earthquake activity, not uh, seeing anything at all, to be honest. This is all wind. Uh, across the rest of the country here, Texas oil fields still getting hit. Oklahoma, New Madrid seismic zone, one earthquake it looks like. Uh, this is from early this morning near, near Steele, Missouri. That is right smack dab in the New Madrid seismic zone. Also got one earthquake here in the last hour. A 3.0 in Virginia. Don't see too, uh, too much earthquake activity out there. It looks like there was another one outside of Richmond here within the last week. Now, this area of the country, uh, let's check out the hot spots here. It is close to an area that uh, can see some larger earthquake activity, historically, that is. I don't recall how big that earthquake was, but we can double check that real quick. We can go 4.5 and above. And we're just going to go back in time to the year 1000. Not going to pull up every earthquake out there like that, but uh, I just want to make sure I'm on the right spot here. So yeah, I wish they would do something different with this map here. I'm guessing this may cover the Richmond area. If not, uh, we'll just make it a little bit larger. I believe that's about right. All right, let's go ahead and check this area, see what we got. Get rid of, uh, there's a Richmond area. Okay, so you can see right here in this hazard zone, 
uh, where you know historically large earthquakes have taken place. Now looks like, um, yeah, I remember that 2011 that 5.8 earthquake that struck out there on a fault system that had been uh, dormant for quite a while. Uh, but it does look like they do get occasional large earthquakes out there, some dating back to the 1700, 1800 time frame. I'm not for sure what the regular intervals are on this uh, fault system out here, but it looks like uh, you know earthquake activity can happen out there. And occasionally we get these small ones as well, like that three-pointer just within the last hour. Uh, aside from that, the rest of the country out there, pretty quiet. Not uh, anything major going on there. There's that 5.5 earthquake. The USGS now just picking up on it. A little bit of a downgrade there, but 68 miles deep into a little trench zone right here. Can't really see it on that map. Got to go to the oceanic crust view uh, to see that uh, subduction zone there that can get some big earthquakes. But for now, just a 5.5 starting to fill in there across that seismic gap zone. And let's see what else we have out here. Still seeing a little bit of aftershock activity down south there from that seven pointer a few days ago. There's that 3.1. Is that what the USGS is reporting to? Uh, USGS reporting that earthquake outside of Richmond is a three pointer. Not a huge difference, but uh, some slight difference there. Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Aside from that, uh, really not seeing anything of any abnormal activity for now. Still keep an eye on the Nankai Trough up here in the Japan region. Got a pretty good cluster of quakes around the Indonesia island area as well. This is going to be, oh, looks like one of these areas out here. It's just been quite active here in the last 24, 48 hours or so. A lot of fours, even occasional five popping up there. Looks like that activity is continuing right now with a 2.8, a little bit further to the west here along this plate boundary. So continue to keep an eye on things here today. See what happens as far as space weather activity. Yeah, we're starting to sizzle a little bit. Notice this on the solar flare chart. Starting to get a little bit of uh, crackling, so to speak. Instability going on from a sunspot. Also a couple, or at least one prominence here. Looks like it's about ready to lift off. Uh, got a couple different ones here. That, uh, yeah, pretty close to blasting off, it looks like. So we'll see if that uh, doesn't provide us with some uh, plasma shooting towards the Earth here in a, in a couple days. That may amplify the aurora conditions. Uh, but far as the flaring goes with that sea flare activity, it may just be a combination of a couple of these sunspots there reaching that uh, sea flare category. Let's take a look at these 4079, of course, is the, uh, you know, the main star, so to speak, far as being the most visual sunspot there on the sun. It's, uh, looks about the same as what it did last night. Really no further intensification of that sunspot. Really not too concerned with this one either. Might see, a, a see maybe a low grade M flare from here, but it's starting to get this separated core here. Uh, this region is starting to get a little bit of interaction between the magnetic complex, uh, magnetic polarity, indicating some complexity here within that sunspot. So that's going to be 4082, might be an area of interest here uh, from for some stronger flaring if it continues to grow. No major roars in the forecast there for now, but uh, keep an eye on those uh, plasma loops. Sometimes they blast off. All right, Storm Prediction Center for severe weather returns out there across Texas with a tornado threat out there today as well around Houston, Austin area. Uh, just a heads up, 10% hatched area. This is a region that we can see uh, a 10% or greater probability of the big tornadoes, EF2 to EF5, within about 25 miles of a point. So if, if a tornado does form, likelihood that it's going to be uh, very strong uh, could happen this afternoon into the evening across this area of Texas. Uh, that's the 10% zone. Also 5 and 2% chance surrounding that area. Got some wind and uh, of course some hail. A little bit of hail threats out there around Austin and Waco area uh, for this uh, wonderful Tuesday. 
Uh, aside from that, uh, let's give a quick glance here at the next close approach asteroids, five of them. If it's going to be working today, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know what's going on with it, but uh, it likes to be weird sometimes. Hello. All right, maybe not. I don't think it's me. I think we're running pretty solid here, so it's just that website that messes up. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Uh, have yourself a good Tuesday. We will catch you guys out here for the Tuesday evening update. Unless something major happens, have a good one. Stay safe.